This one's personal. I know what it's like to have the government say, "We're going to kill you in the morning." I know what it's like to leave the country on six hours of notice and land on someone's couch. Because of that, I wrote a book on why countries do well and why they don't. Let me summarize: 250 pages. Countries have to be compassionate. They have to be kind. They have to be smart. They have to be brave. Want to know what doesn't work? When you govern through fear and you govern through cruelty, it just doesn't work. You can play Genghis Khan for a while. You can play Stalin for a while. You can play Pinochet for a while. It does not work in the long run. And it doesn't work in the long run because to govern through fear and cruelty, you have to create a division. You have to take big chunks of the country and convince them they're now not like them. That they shouldn't associate with them, that they shouldn't talk to them, that those people are nasty, those people are criminals, those people are rapists, and the country is in danger because of them. And if you spend millions of dollars doing that in your country, you will make enemies abroad, and you will create divisions within. And that has consequences. Three quarters of the flags and the borders and the anthems around the United Nations today—they were not there a few decades ago. Those lines that are there today, those flags were created because somebody said, "The Scots are not like us. The Welsh are not like us. The Basques are not like us. The Northern Italians are not like us. The Muslims are not like us. The Blacks, the Whites, the Christians. You create us versus them. You destroy nations." Part of the problem from creating us versus them is it's hard to do. What you have to do is you have to make people believe absurdities. And once people believe absurdities, then they start to commit atrocities. That's the dynamic of this thing. You can't create us versus them. You can't have the massacres you had in Rwanda. You can't have the massacres you had in Yugoslavia. Unless if you create this dynamic. Let me summarize current immigration policy. Let's deter them by being as cruel as we can possibly be, and let's target their children. They are going after the children. You have U.S. lawyers arguing that kids do not need soap or hugs or showers, adult help or release date. Somebody gets pulled over for broken taillight who's worked here for 20 years, gets thrown into jail, maybe for life. With no legal representation, the terrorists who blew up the World Trade Center get lawyers. These kids, these parents, they don't get lawyers. Governments are telling some of the most desperate, hurt people on earth, "I took your child. Pay me $800 for a DNA test before you get it back." Three-year-olds are appearing in court. Look, we've all watched these courtroom dramas, and it's exciting because. The wise judge sits up there, and the defense lawyer attacks, and the prosecutor counterattacks, and then you figure out how it's going to happen. I want you to understand what is happening right now. Prosecutors there, it's the tough prosecutor accusing, attacking on behalf of we the people. The judge is up there, Judge Muckety Muck, with his black robes. And he's questioning the defendant from up there, and the defendant is three years old, and the eyes don't reach the side of the table. The defendant does not speak the language. The earphones for the translator have fallen off the defendant's head because there are no headphones for three-year-olds in U.S. courtrooms, because they are not supposed to defend themselves. This makes a mockery of justice. It makes a mockery of the prosecution system. It makes a mockery of who we are as a nation. These are absurdities. These are atrocities. This is unbelievable. And we're looking at a bunch of statistics, but I want you to understand: this is happening to the housekeeper who brought up your kids. This is happening to the gardener who took care of your house. This is happening to the guy who washed the dishes in the fancy restaurant you went to last week. This is happening to the people who deliver the newspaper in the mornings. 
This is your community. These are the people who have lived side by side with you, treated you well, treated you with respect, taken care of your kids, taken care of your grandparents. This is Luis. This is Laura. This is Jaime. This isn't some abstract. Oh, it's happening at the border. This is happening in our community right now. And the danger in this stuff is once you start normalizing absurdities and atrocities, people think that those instruments are legitimate. So you get school boards sending out letters like this: "Dear parent, because your kid owes lunch money to the cafeteria, the result may be that your child will be taken away and put in foster care." This is going out from school boards because people think, well, that seems to be an instrument of deterrence. When you board an airplane, before kids, before first class, soldiers in uniform board. Some of them are immigrants. Here's the contract: join the army, serve your term, be honorably discharged, get citizenship. We are rescinding those contracts after they have been signed. And if those soldiers are killed in action, we are deporting their wives and sometimes their children. These are the people who protect us. These are the people that we honor. These are the brave, and this is how we're treating them. These are not the people who cross the border illegally. Once you start allowing this kind of behavior, it normalizes into a society and it rips the society. Apart, countries are built on the hard work and grit of immigrants. We are all immigrants. We just came at different times. Fifty-five percent of this country's main businesses, the most successful businesses in this country, the unicorns, are built by people who came as foreign students or who came as immigrants, and they're the founders or the co-founders. Well, here's what's happened over the last three years: two of the best brains in the world. 42 percent of them did not get visas or chose not to get visas. This is how you wipe out an economy. This isn't about kids in borders. This is about us. This is about who we are, who we the people are, as a nation and as individuals. This is not an abstract debate. A lot of us like to think if we had been back. When Hitler was rising to power, we would have been out in the street. We would have opposed him. We would have stopped Mengele. A lot of us like to think we'd been around during the 60s. We would have been with the Freedom Riders. We would have been at that bridge in Selma. But guess what? Here's your chance. It's now. And as you're thinking about this stuff, it's not just the giant axe. It's not just go and block the bridge or chain yourself to something. It's what you do in your daily lives. The Harvard Art Museum just opened a show on how artists think about immigration and building a home somewhere else. And people come out of that show and they're pretty shaken.、And、there was a blank wall at the end, and the curators did something that usually doesn't happen. They improvised. They drew four lines and put in two words: "I belong."、And、so you come out of this exhibit and you can take a picture in front of it. I can't tell you the impact that has on people. I watch people come out of this, and some of them sat in front of that picture and took the picture, and they had a great big grin on their face, and some people just had tears. Some people hugged and brought in strangers; others brought in their family. Small acts of kindness go a long, long, long way. There is pain going on in your community like you cannot believe. So next time you're with a cab driver who may be one of them, according to certain people, give that person an extra five bucks. Next time you see a hotel maid, thank her and tip her double. Next time you see your gardener, you see your nanny, you see somebody like this, give them a great big hug and tell them they belong. Make them feel like they belong. It's time for big policies, but it's also time. For big acts of kindness, because we have to reclaim who we are. We have to reclaim this nation, and we cannot sit there and watch the shit going on. This has got to stop. It's got to stop now. Thank you.